you cannot just you cannot get that out of merely the complexity of the individual parts. You've got to have a radical way of thinking that the world is basically organic and the me mechanis mechanistic part is just an aspect of the deeper organic part. That's not denying mechanism. That's putting mechanism in its place and not making mechanism and reductionism drive you. And when you go and you put there, that's when you're going back to the mechanistic world. Yes. So what we're saying is physics is biology at a smaller scale. Yes. There's no difference between physics and biology. Fundamentally. And then you can even be outrageous and say, well, maybe even the electron has a proto-consciousness. There's a thought. <laughs> yes, if it's part of the totality. Yes. yes. Oh, fascinating questions. But don't you think this ought to be out there, that we ought to be discussing this in these terms? I think, I think um, a proof of the fact that we're living in an insane world is the fact that this thing should have been out there and everybody should have talked about it by now. Yeah. yeah. This is a proof that the world has gone insane if they have not taken this thing seriously. I they find it very difficult. I mean, even bright people like Roger Penrose, who's very open and very... He's a nice guy who I've known for a long time, but they find these ideas, these, these philosophical ideas, very difficult. Because the human mind is caught in the thought structure, you see. Yes, it, we're caught in the world of cups and saucers and... Uh, and names. And, and names, names and objects. And, uh, and our language has been developed. Yes. Object, subject. Yes. And they're always... We don't start... This is where the, the Indian language, you know, the, the, the Leroy right. Little Bear is coming yes. in. And one of the things that David wanted to do was maybe if we could t change our language... So that it was the Rio mode, the flowing mode. Rio means flow? Rio is, is a Greek word for flow. Yes. Rheology is the study of flows of liquids through tubes. So if you could think of... You know, now, the, the problem with that was, I, I remember he and I used to try and... We had games of playing this, trying to talk in the Rio mode. And I suddenly said to him one day, David, why are we translating all this beautiful language into... Object, subject, object, verb, subject, object, verb. In other words, our dominant thought was subject, object, and interaction. And I think it's very difficult to get into this, this, this other mode because, as you say, as soon as you, as soon as I left David Bohm's company when I was learning about this or trying to understand it, I would get into technical arguments about quarks interacting with quarks and. You would get all this other language. What's the interaction? Hamiltonian. And then you'd sort of scream and say, well, look, look, look. This is not what the informal stuff is telling us about. Yes. Uh, Basil, right now they're spending billions about making these atomic centers. And do you think it is of any use finding the God particle and prophet particle? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm prejudiced. No. I mean, I'm not going to stop them from... I'm not going to say they shouldn't do it. But I think that it's overhyped. It's overhyped. Um, in fact, I think... I mean, I remember once David said to me, he said, uh, why do they, these people think they're finding the... the, the well, it's called, look, look what they're doing. The basic building blocks of nature. And what, a, what is quantum mechanics telling us? There is no basic building blocks. I'm sorry, it's as simple as that. Because when we tried, you know, David Bohm was criticised for his interpretation of the quantum mechanics because people thought that he was taking them back to, to classical mechanics. Heisenberg was screaming at him, two times two equals five. 
what, 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 where's that come from? You know, there's some sort of irrationality suddenly develops in this. And the point is that if you go on, even Heisenberg, though, and then later on in life, says the trouble with high energy physics, this is just before he died, the trouble with high energy physics is it thinks these elementary particles are parts. And he even he said that's the wrong thing to do. But you see, it's been a big success. Because it goes along with the human thought structure. Yes. It's natural. Yeah. You are there, I'm here, I'm not you. No. You're separate than me, right? Yeah. But we're not, because we're, we're not. all the thought structure, they're yes. all the... But my the mind says to me, you're separate, yeah. so... My atom must be separate from your yeah. atom. They must collide, and therefore the whole... The whole thing gets The whole going. thing, yeah, yes, yeah, is yeah. mechanical. Yes. But it's not. And it's when you get in the brain, when you get in the thought process, etc. Because this is all reality. We say this is reality, but it's a reality that we have manufactured. Yeah? Yes. I mean, I never forget the time when I drove... My RV, you know what an RV, an American RV, recreation vehicle, mm -hmm. where you've got your fridge and your cooker and your bed in the back. You know, these enormous things that Americans are good at. We went into the wilderness. And I sort of parked the car and I thought, well, there's something wrong here. This wonderful wilderness, but we go out, have a look at it, and then rush back in to our little cabin. With our shower, with our fridge, with our cooker. So we're taking this, <laughs> this reality and just... You see what I mean? The contrast is absolutely incredible. I want to go and live in the wilderness, we said. Hell, we've got our fridge, we've got 